Ingrid Seward's new book, My Mother and I, challenges the oft-repeated story that um, Prince Charles, as a pupil, hated Gordonston School up in Morrishire in the very north of Scotland. Uh, she says that she had tea with the then Prince of Wales uh, at Highgrove, his house in Gloucestershire, and she mentioned Gordonston, not least because her late husband, Ross Benson, was a contemporary of Prince Charles at the school and was in the same house as Prince Charles. And uh, apparently the Prince of Wales replied that Gordonston wasn't brutal, it was just basic and uh, it taught him independence. But I'm afraid that doesn't mean to say he liked it because I don't think he did uh, witness the fact that uh, when it came to his own sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, he did not pointedly send them to Gordonston. He sent them to Eton hard by Windsor Castle. And it is uh, well known and has never been denied that when he had to go back to Gordonston, having spent the weekend uh, with his um, grandmother, the Queen Mother, the late Queen Mother, he would cry on her shoulder because he hated going back there. There's no doubt that he was brutalized by other boys on the rugby field and elsewhere. And then, of course, that did happen to him also in Australia, where he was at the Geelong Grammar School for some time during his wider education. Ingrid Seward says in her book uh, that uh, when the engagement of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was in the offing, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, the late husband of the late Queen, uh, took to calling Meghan the D.O.W., a reference to the Duchess of Windsor, uh, Wallace Simpson, who married, of course, uh, the Edward VIII, who then abdicated on the 10th of December 1936 in order to be with the woman he loved. Uh, this was uh, quite a pointed reference because the Duchess of Windsor, yes, she was an American, and yes, she was twice divorced. Meghan only once divorced when she got married at St. George's Chapel, Windsor. And of course, in the royal family, the Duchess Win of Windsor was regarded with some great disdain because she was seen to be uh, the reason for all the terrible things that had happened. Abdication was the big banned word in the royal family because uh, when Edward VIII uh, abdicated, it meant that the Queen's father, uh, the Duke of York, then became uh, King George VI. And the Queen Mother, to her dying day, believed the fact that the extra uh, uh, responsibility uh, put on the shoulders of her husband, who hadn't been prepared for being the monarch, uh, helped to shorten his life. I think uh, it, it, it quite clearly was a pointed reference by the Duke of Edinburgh. It, I would have thought that he probably didn't quite approve of, of the match. And I think uh, using that nickname or that coded word uh, rather indicated that. In the book, Ingrid Seward says that the Queen was unhappy or questioned the shade of white of the wedding dress that uh, Meghan Markle uh, wore for her splendid wedding at St. George's Chapel Easter, thinking that perhaps it was too white uh, for a, a divorced woman. I wonder um, if that is uh, absolutely true because uh, the Queen was a, a great study. She was a great authority on matters of this kind and she would know that it is not the shade, the exact shade of white that a bride wears uh, that proclaims her virtue or, or virginity, uh, but rather if she wears or chooses to wear orange blossom. Orange blossom has always been the indication, the floral indication of purity. In her book, uh, Ingrid says that um, the late queen was not happy about her eldest son, Prince Charles and Prince of Wales, uh, volunteering to give away the bride uh, at the marriage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Uh, the Queen was a stickler on, on these sort of formalities, and she would have realised that what is the reality of it all in? In a wedding, the person giving the bride away is usually the father, or if the father has died, or is not available, then a senior member, male member of the family usually steps in to do the job. Well, in this case, of course, Meghan Markle wasn't on good terms at all 
with her father, Thomas Markle. Indeed, she was on bad terms with every member of her family, apart from her mother, who was at the wedding, and one, uh, one niece. So Prince Charles, I think, rather gallantly and rather nobly stepped in. But from the Queen's point of view, it did slightly cross over the family border here. It should have been somebody from Meghan's family giving her away in marriage, uh, as is normal, and certainly in most Christian uh, ceremonies of this kind. So I think that was it. I don't think she, uh, the Queen uh, criticised the, the Prince in particular, but she felt it was a, a departure from what was normal and, and customary. And she didn't like things like that. She always liked things to be properly done, the medals worn in the right order, the orders uh, done in the right order, everything done perfectly. In her book, uh, Ingrid Seward does mention and detail the change of the relationship between the late Queen and her grandson, Prince Harry. And I think that was inevitable. I, I'm sure, I'm certain the Queen would have been dismayed uh, by what happened thereafter, because the royal family went out of its way to me welcome Meghan Markle into the family. And if you remember, the crowds were standing 20 deep in Windsor Great Park to welcome them. Uh, it couldn't have been uh, a more friendly uh, introduction to the royal family. I think uh, what is more interesting in the book was um, the details about the coming apart of the relationship between Prince Harry and his older brother, Prince William, and Prince William complaining about some of the antics, as he saw it, that uh, Prince Harry got up to. Uh, and Prince William apparently made the point that um, when he uh, got married, uh, he had to shave off his beard because um, army officers are not allowed uh, to have a full beard. That's for the Royal Navy. They're allowed to have a moustache, but not a full beard. Um, Prince Harry, of course, uh, insisted on keeping his beard, even though he he was in uh, a, a household cavalry uniform when he got married. Also, Prince William, I think, wanted to, um, to get married in the uniform of the RAF. And of course, he'd qualified as a helicopter pilot with the RAF and served uh, very well uh, in that role. Uh, but he was told by the Queen quite uh, pointedly uh, that he had to wear uh, the uniform of the Brigade of Guards, a red tunic. Well, I always felt that red and white, you know, the red of the tunic and the white of the bride's dress, in this case, Kate Middleton, always rather goes to, it's rather garish, you know, rather garish, like a barber's pole, red and white. Uh, but anyway, they were red and white, and, and Prince William did as he was told, because he was told that that was the right way of doing things. And then he saw his younger brother more or less flout these rules, and that uh, rather rankled with him. I think, in a way, that's quite understandable. It's a small thing, but between brothers, it can mean quite a lot.